Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. It's Sunday morning, or at least it's Sunday morning where we are. If it's the afternoon or evening, thanks for joining and spending some time with us today. We've got the look who's here, Mr. Grant Arthur himself from the look at that in Grant's Rock Warehouse. First time on the channel. Welcome, my friend. Good to have you. Hey, it's great to be here. I'm I'm honored. I I'm almost speechless, Pete. But I appreciate it. this is going to be a great. You can't topic. be speechless because we have a lot to talk about today, Grant. I'll be good. I'll be good. <laughs> Get ready. So I, I reached out to so Grant had me on the Contrarians recently, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, I hope to be back on there as well. And then after that, I reached out to him. I said, you know, I want to get you on SOT. Uh, I think you'd be really good for a rank in the album show. So I threw uh, I think that I asked you about Sly first. Or did I throw some other names? out? No, you just threw Sly out. And I said, Sly let's out, do Sly. I, I, I've been wanting to do Sly for a while. And I know mm -hmm. Grant likes a lot of this type of thing. And I was mm -hmm. like, I, I bet you he would be able to do this. And he was like, yeah. yes. So here we are just a couple of weeks later, we've got uh, 10 albums. We're going to rank, we're going to talk about them. We're going to dissect them and we're going to somehow put them in our order of preference. That's always the hardest part of doing these. So with all that being said, uh, Grant will kick us off with his number 10. Yeah. Number 10. Now I just want to say before we get started that Sly has one of those careers that you know, like some bands start out of the gate and their records are like really good, you know, and then you have bands like XTC had, that over their career just excelled and never put out a bad record. And some people may argue this, but they always improved. I think not many bands do that. Sly out of the gate, got better with each record to a certain point. His career is kind of, I look at it kind of like Prince's career to some degree. Right. Yes. Bit, right? It's like a bell curve, yeah. but we're going to get there. So my, but anyway, I think this is a great topic. I appreciate you bring, bringing it to my attention. This is going to be a lot of fun. So my number 10. Wow. This is something 1982's ain't, but the one way, which is the final Sly and the family stone album. Good. You've got the props. I've yeah. got, I've got the CD that I have is the uh, one way CD. This also came out on Rhino handmade in the early 2000s. So this is good. If you can find it, it's still in print by the way, but anyway, ain't but the one way 1982. This is the end of the line for Sly. This album originally was like a collaboration between um, George Clinton and Sly, you know, but it fell apart. Warner brothers, Got sick of uh, well, not Sly, but they he they I think they was George Clinton on Warner's. They must have been, but they either dropped him or what. He had a falling out with Warner Brothers. Yeah, him and, and the Funkadelic Band had a falling out with uh, Warner Brothers, and that basically just <laughs> this whole project went. And then Sly Stone disappeared. Yeah. So the producer had to finish this record. So it's only really a Sly and the Family Stone album in name. It's just Sly and a bunch of other people, but. Steve Levine finished it up. It's basically, it has a lot of different styles. There are some songs on here that do harken back to an earlier time of Sly, but there's disco elements here. It's just kind of half baked. I don't know. Ha ha he he harks back to the old Sly. That's not bad. That is but the thing is with Sly, I think there's something to do with Sly from that early 70s and that late 60s period with the sound and the production quality sly i don't think translates well into the 80s for some reason i don't know but i don't think the material here's all that great it's okay it's just a it's, yeah it's okay i wouldn't start here kids only get this if you're completist so that's my number 10 yeah, more about that in a, just a couple minutes. Uh, I'm going to go number 10, back on the right track from 1979. So this is the album right before the one that Graham was just talking about. Uh, I, I think you could probably say about both of these albums, kind of a lot of the same things. Uh, here, again, it's Sly and the Family Stone, but it's only a couple of the old classic members mm -hmm. are back. So it's kind of a name only. This was looked at as he's back or they're back. It's going to be a return to form. And to mixed results. There's some good stuff on here. Uh, it takes all kinds. That's kind of cool. It's got that funky sound. I think he hit on the nail on the head, though. His classic music, or their classic music, let's say their, right, even though he's a driving force, has a kind of like a shelf life, right? Mm -hmm. Late 70s into the 80s. I don't know. 
Mm. Does it really fit so well with the time? Does it age so well with the time? Maybe not. But there's some good stuff on it. Who's to say? Groovalicious. I mean, that's what you like. You want this funky, groove-laden, just raucous music from these guys. And that's what they do well. Um, you got It's Not Adding Up, which has got lots of cool horns. One of the things I like about this band, when they're really on, the horns are fantastic. Um, same thing is also fun. Sheer Energy, I kind of like too. A little bit too harmonica. Most people know I don't like harmonica all that much. Eh. But most of the rest of the songs on here are just not all that memorable. And I mm -hmm. think that's what really brings down this album and the album you just mentioned. It's like there's moments, but there's not enough of them. And what's great about the early Sly catalog or the Sly catalog that really with the, the cream of the crop is that you've got tons of memorable songs, like instantly. Yep. Some of these, it's like it's almost like you want these to be better songs and they're kind of not. So it's not awful. But it's not really great either. So yeah, back on the right track for me doesn't really get them back on the right track. It, it attempts to, but it's just not. I wouldn't start here either, guys. So yeah, I wouldn't start there. And that is my number nine. And like you said, this had two singles on it. Who Who are you? And the same thing, but it doesn't have that magic that the old Sly had yeah. but this record I do think is a bit better because at least you have Rose and Freddie on vocals it sounds more like Sly and the Family Stone here yeah. but I agree with you 100% the material's not here I think you know everybody has their moment I think Sly had his moment you know and it's hard to look at these records and it's I when I do these reviews or I look at these catalogs like I always try to look at these albums if they stood on their own without any previous material to compare to and with Sly and the Family Stone, their, their earlier catalog is so strong. It's, it's hard. It kind of clouds your it opinion really of later stuff because yeah. it, I mean, we're talking strong. Sly was an innovator, you know, and here on this stuff, he's not an innovator anymore. He is a follower. He's just kind of throwing it out there. It It's kind of sad, but, I wouldn't start here. The Warner Brothers albums, you know, I if you're a completist, you need it. But yeah, I still think this is a little, a little bit better than the 82 album. Okay. Yeah, it's it's close for me. And that's that's my number it, nine. You know, um, it's like that. And you know, you mentioned uh a very key thing here. And one of the reasons, one of the few reasons why some of these latter period albums don't work so well is because you don't have that core of the band together, right? Right. You mentioned Rose and Freddie and Larry. I mean, all these guys that were so important to the early albums when you had all of them singing, that was the signature Sly and the Family Stone sound, right? All these vocals. Mm -hmm. And when it's, you know, he's amazing, right? He's a driving force of the band. But when it's just him running the show, like every step of the way, and you're missing all those other members who are key members, it's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, yeah, this, mm -hmm. this, this album is kind of a mess. Uh, you don't really know who's playing on it, you know, featured musicians, and it just lists a whole bunch of people. But it's, you know, Abraham Laboreal, Paulina da Costa, and Rosie Banks, Cynthia Robinson, Jerry Martini, Bobby Lyle, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. um, this was supposed to be a, like you said, George Clinton and Sly Stone collaboration. Not that at all. Loving You is kind of good. Ha ha, he he is fun. Mm -hmm. um, Hi, y'all is kind of like a mashup of little pieces of all his other stuff, right? Old classic songs. That's kind of bizarre, but it's kind of cool. Um, it's a fun jam. I don't know. Most of what's on here, who in the funk do you think you are? That's kind of trying to recapture the old magic. But this to me just sounds like a hodgepodge of things that were put together. And they really were because the producer was just like, all right, I got nobody here to work with anymore. So let's take what we got and just kind of, it's like a Frankenstein album, right? My Frankenstein monster album. So that being said, uh, it's not great. It's got its moments. I think mm -hmm. probably everybody, all the rest of the albums going forward, at least have a, a good amount to recommend. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't start with either one of these two, but they're not awful. They're not awful. So, but the no, best there's nothing. There's nothing in the catalog that's awful. No, no, not at all. Not at all. But I will say, if you're looking for Sly and the Family Stone in the funk mode, that '82 album, there's no funk on there at all. So. It's more well, it moves a little bit, but not enough. Yeah, but not not hardcore sly funk. No, you know? no, not at all. All right, number eight. What do you got? Uh, number or is it number seven? Wait a minute. No, number eight. We're right. Um, I'm gonna go with "Heard You Miss Me While I'm Back" from 1976. This record 
there. That's the one. That's exactly the one I've got. The BGO. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good collection, right? Even though it's weird, it's got the uh, the solo album on there too. But you know, whatever. Well, yeah. Well, this is kind of a solo album, you know. Because <laughs> think about it: the original Sly and the Family Stone broke up in '75. The only people on this that are, are, are a carryover is Cynthia Robinson. That's it. So essentially, this is a Sly Stone solo album. Just a Sly and the Family Stone album by name, but it starts off strong. Heard you miss me while well, I'm back. I listened to that when that opens. I thought, holy mackerel, is this 1968? It yeah. fits right in. The tonal quality of this record is very similar to what you're kind of used to or accustomed to. I don't know. Is it out of date for 1976? I don't know. Maybe. Um, you do have Peter Frampton on here, Pete, playing guitar. So that's good. But I don't really hear much funk on this record either. You know, if this album would have came earlier in his career, as opposed to when it did, I would look at it differently. It's not a bad record at all. No. But is it Sly and the Family Stone? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it's okay. I, I don't know if I'd recommend it. If you're a completist, you want it. But it's not bad at all. I don't know. That would be, I don't know. Your uh, mileage may be different. A little bit, a little bit. So my number eight might surprise you a little bit. Um, okay. And again, not a bad record here, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go with the debut, a whole new thing from 1967. Ooh. I like this. It's not fully realized band yet to me. Uh, I think this is a very decent collection of R&B light funk and more soul than anything else mm -hmm. um it's obviously not as commercial sounding as the couple that came after or the handful that came after it there's no like standout big hit here but the grooves are there and the horns are spectacular on this album um and it this one was recorded live in the studio so there you know there's uh, and we're going to talk about that about this next thing i'm going to say in detail coming up there is a psychedelic edge to those classic albums that's not quite here yet and i think that's what i'm missing from this album i think this does the r&b soul thing good uh there's the funk that we're going to hear much much more of on the next album and certainly the album after that is coming um but there's none of the psych here i think which i'm which i miss um, but here you got all the guys they're all singing right to get the classic vocalist on here except for rose um she's not in the band yet uh, I think Underdog is a great song. Turn Me Loose, Raucous. That's kind of close to where they would go very soon after. I love If This Room Could Talk. Um, the organ work from Sly is great on this album. There's great horns. Trip to Your Heart is good. Bad Risk is catchy. It's. I really can't say much bad about this. I just think that um, that kind of bump and drive and groove and kind of weird psychedelia that's to come, it's not quite here yet, but this is a good album probably could be ranked higher obviously i think it's gonna be ranked higher on your list but uh, i i wouldn't start with this one but yeah. if you really like like the next few that come out you're gonna to want to hear this and get this because this is this is where they originally came from to become that so this album had to happen um i think it's better than the two we've already mentioned maybe not quite for me hitting the marks of some of the other ones but i still think it's good i think everything from here on in is definitely worth checking out so that's my number number eight that's excellent. That's a good one. Yeah, mine's up. I rated that one higher, but you know, hey, okay, the way it works. That's why we're so what you're talking about this. Yep. All right, my next one is Small Talk from 1974. This is where, yes, this is where I think some people think that the album prior to this fresh is where the cracks started to form. I don't agree. I think things started to fall apart on Small Talk. You know, you've got the, the funk is practically gone on this record. It starts out, the first track has baby sounds on it. I don't know. I know Sly is going into a different era in his life. I get it. But the, the most, let's say, soulful, funky thing is Loose Booty. That's the most lively track on the record. It's great. Loose booty. Yeah, it's like what we want to hear. <laughs> yeah. But this record just kind of lays there. It's very, I'm not going to use the term mellow, but it's, eh. I will, <laughs> but this is where Sly starts being a follower because during this era, there are other bands doing funk better than Sly's doing it. Yeah. And he's hardly doing it here. You know, the Ohio players for one, 
great funk band. They 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 basically took what Sly put down and they took it and ran with it, you know. Sly's well, this is this is where it starts, I think. But I don't really I don't really go for this record or play it very often, but it's better than what I listed, you know, the other records. It's it's yeah, it's not like this is like I said, this is where the cracks start forming kids. So, you know. Well, all right. So that's my number seven. Uh, and the reason why I ranked it above a whole new thing is because I think for me, it carries over enough of those elements I really like, but you 100% hit it on the nail, uh, hit the nail on the head. It's it's a mellow album. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but when I listen to this album, I hear a Prince album from like the mid late 80s <laughs> or even since the 90s. I mean, literally, well, and that's, you know, again, we we have to stress how influential this guy was. So even when he's mm-hmm. doing an album like this, which mo- many people might find somewhat mediocre, and, and this is more of like, to, for me, an R&B soul album, mm-hmm. funk album. There, there are a couple songs, you know, you mentioned uh, Loose Booty, which is great. Living While I'm Living, I think, is also pretty funky. But this is very much a smooth R&B album and not a bad one for, for what it is. Right. Like, man, every time I listen to this album, I'm thinking, God. Prince must have listened to this guy constantly because oh. I hear so much of Prince Prince's more R&B centered stuff on this album. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's got its moments. It's uh, it's kind of hit or miss for me. What's kind of cool about this record for those watching who are Robin Trower fans, you've got Rusty Allen on bass on here and Bill Lorden on drums here, both future members of Robin Trower's band uh, doing something completely different, but the, you know, obviously they, they work with a legend before they started working with uh, Robin, but yeah, I mean, there's the vocals are good. You know, he's doing basically everything, you know, you've mm-hmm. got, this is the last with, sort of the original stone band yeah Um, but he he his dominance is kind of here and again this is we're talking almost mid 70s so i don't know grant is he still mired in his serious cocaine addiction at this point or is he kind of moving out of that i I, i'm trying to because i know he beginning of the 70s he's already mired in that i mean by 1970 he's already a, a serious cocaine addict so i don't know how long that really lasted and whether some of the mediocreness of a few albums has to do with that. But, you know, obviously it kind of splintered the band and I'm sure they, he was the only one who was having issues at the time. So I don't know. Yeah. Cause Sly was very erratic. He wouldn't show up for shows, yeah. you know, he was leaving the band hanging. He and, I haven't really read very much about his drug use during this era. I wouldn't be surprised though, but you know, then again, recently had a child i don't know he's in love i don't maybe he i don't know he maybe he's uh shaped up i don't know but i have I not this way. Yeah. read anything about that at all yeah. so i don't know but, I, I know it was more so earlier in the decade so i'm i don't know when he kind of started cleaning himself out whether it was you know before this or after this i don't know but i just know from like based on everything i've read from like 69 through like 72 or so that's kind of like but again that's putting out some of his best music at that time, right? We always talk about how all these rock stars were putting out some of their best music when they were on drugs, but, you know, personally, their lives are falling apart, but creatively speaking, they're they're doing great things. And it's no different with this guy. So. No, no different. Yeah. But he's they, never they really... Drugs, uh, man, and all of a sudden, their music ain't no good anymore. So, I don't know. <laughs> all right, that's a good choice. Um, number six. Yes. All right, number six for me is... A whole new thing from 1967. Uh, this is more of just a collection of songs. It's not really, it's an album. Yeah. All, it, it's energetic. The band sounds great. Yeah, Everybody's singing. I mean, it's great, but the songs aren't really there. It's more of a just a collection of music, I would say, you know. But it does sound like a band effort. I describe this as like Sunshine Soul. Because it's kind of that sunshine pop and soul together. I I don't know really any other band that really displays something like this. Sly and the Family Stone were totally unique. This is when they, at this time, very positive, uplifting, makes you feel good to listen to it. I think it's a good debut. Back in the day, they they basically gave this like a three-star review. I mean, it probably did. It didn't set the world on fire. 
but I think maybe you could look at it. It's a good starting point. You know, like I said, they improved to a certain point. Yeah. They didn't, they weren't great right out of the, out of the gate, but the horns, you mentioned the horns, the horns are great on this, yeah. but you can listen to this record over and over again. And really none of the songs really stick. It's just, there's no wow factor, right? I mean, that's what it is. When the couple that came after have that wow factor, this is, it's good. It's solid, but there's no like, look at me. And, and you don't, you don't stay, holy cow, that's something totally new and exciting. Right. It's new and it's good, but it's not that impact is not quite there yet. There and I don't, and I don't think that anybody on this record necessarily stands out. No, no. It's pretty. I mean, it's well balanced. You know, like in a lot of those later ones, you know, Sly is totally dominating. Yeah. But here, it does seem like a group effort, and I think it's a fine debut. I think it's okay. You yeah. know, I'd recommend it. But there are other albums I would. Uh, recommend first a little bit more yeah I, that's and that's exactly i think where i was coming from as well all right on that, number six i'm gonna go with uh heard you miss me well i'm back from 1976 uh yeah i mean kind of like a return to form you know yeah. uh, after, after the high on you album I, I i dig this album i think it's good uh it's missing most of those classic members though i think which is again to your point is it really a family stone album yeah maybe not mm -hmm. Is it a kind of like a continuation of his little solo career there, that brief solo career? Probably more. But there's some good stuff on here. What was I thinking in my head? That sounds like vintage stuff from them. Title track is really good. Again, the horns are great on here. I love his clavinet that he throws in quite a bit on some of these albums. Really good keyboard player. I don't think he gets enough uh, credit for just how good that the organ and the electric piano and the clavinet and the synthesizers on some of these albums. Really, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Mother is a Hippie, I think, is loads of fun. Um, some weird kind of pre-disco-y stuff on this album, right? Mm-hmm. And I think what really surprises me is that you hear a little bit on this album. So this is what, 1976. I'm almost shocked that he didn't just go and do a full on disco album. You know, I'm, I'm really shocked that he didn't just do that. Would that have been any good? Probably not. But I'm just I'm <sighs> surprised, though, because he hints at it. And on a couple of these albums right around this time period, but he never goes full bore. And so I could just picture him with like, you know, the strings and the, I, I could just see it and hear it. But he never actually did that. And would that have been better for his career than kind of what he did on those last two albums? Maybe, you know, would he be just kind of jumping on board what everybody else was doing? Yeah, we're used to being him being an innovator and that would just be following the trends. But would it have worked? I don't know. I don't know. But you look at that 82 album and there are elements of disco on there. And now it's too late, right? And it's too late. Yeah. And it's, I mean, had it been 1978, I could see that. Yeah. It probably would that album probably would have fit a lot better in 1978 than it does in. Oh, by '82, that's dead in the door. Yeah, it's dead, dead in the door. Yeah, it's, and no, you know, no one cared about Sly at that point. You know, no, no not at all. No all right. <laughs> all right, the top five. I mean, here we go. This here is... we go. All right, my uh, number five is "Dance to the Music" from 1968. You probably one of the greatest Sly and the Family Stone tracks. "Dance to the Music" leads it off. And there's, it is a classic. This is Sly and the Family Stone starting to come together. Now, not everything on this record is like that, though. But that's that's the uh, kind of the, uh, I don't know, what would you say? Uh, this is more like, I would say, oh, gosh, how do I want to put it's it? The, it's a blueprint for everything that's coming afterwards. Excellent. Pete, that's an excellent it. It's joyful. It's happy. We're still in that positive mode. Um, the song Higher, very positive. They later turned that into I Want to Take You Higher. You can see that throughout Sly and the Family Stone's career, how he'll take an idea from an earlier record, rework it later, and even make it better. So the and other then, and, and but, that's a great point. Doing the reimagining thing with mm -hmm. existing music way before anybody else is doing that right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. never I, I mean it's amazing the other highlight i think for this record is the 12 minute dance to the medley you've got right. the interplay between larry graham and greg the drummer unbelievable the way the band plays off each other on this record it's great yeah. i mean it's still more in that line where it's just more of a collect it's more of a listening experience than solid songs 
Okay. Side one, I, I really don't have much to complain about side one. Pretty good side two. Yeah, not as great as side one, but the songs are getting better. The sounds coming together. Just great things are on the way, you know? Yeah. So number five. Cool. More about that later. Uh, I, I do want to touch on something you mentioned. These guys are monster players. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they ever got enough credit for just, you know, maybe Larry Graham, right? One of the great bass players in this genre, I think, of this time period. But all these guys, Greg the drummer, I mean, uh, Freddie, I mean, these are really good players. And Sly's yeah. keyboard work is great, too. So, yeah. Uh, well, I, I would mention this. Oh, I'd mention this. If you've ever, anyone out there, if you've seen this, the uh, footage at Woodstock of them playing Dance the Music and I Want to Take You Higher, they, in 1969, they were on fire. Yeah. That footage is unbelievable. The, the And that right there just proves to you what a great band they were. Oh, monsters. Well, you now know? you threw out Woodstock. I'll just, I was going to talk about it at the end, but. Oh, okay. If, well, if you can find this, this is a Sly and the Family Stone, the Woodstock experience. So this has, uh, it's a two disc set. You get the stand album and then you get the entire Woodstock performance. It's terrific. It's terrific because most people only know like want to take you higher from the from the movie, but the whole rest of the set is just amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we'll we'll save we'll we'll bring that up again at the end because I, I have another live album I want to show at the end. But yeah, um, terrific live band. Oh I my mean, god! Yeah. Not that I ever saw them live, but based on everything I've heard, yeah, really, really good. Um, my number five is Fresh, sixth album from nineteen seventy three. Uh, you know this kind of. Uh, takes a little bit of a detour from the album that came before it. There's a riot going on, which is really kind of dense and serious and somewhat dark. And here, this is a little lighter and airier and goes back to the feel of the first two albums, uh, almost like jazzier in spots, right? Mm -hmm. There's like a little bit of jazz on here. Uh, in Time, terrific song. Killer. Love the grooves on there. So good. The pop and bass, the organ, I mean, all that kind of stuff. They've got horns and guitars, everything. I mean, musically, top-notch stuff here. Uh, Thankful and Thoughtful is really great. Let Me Have It is great. Frisky is really good. I mean, there's just boom, 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 boom. Babies making babies is fun. Uh, it's a lighthearted album, but it's still lots of fun. It's funky. It's enjoyable. You know, their take on Que Sera, Sera is kind of fun i would have rather had another original well, I, I like it. it but it's well done right it's really oh. fun they do it really really good uh and then you know keep on dancing reuses a little bit of dance to the music we just talked about how he was notorious for kind of remaking and reimagining ideas mm -hmm. from previous songs and albums but yeah this is good god i still have this nice price sticker on it you look at that oh, yeah right uh but yeah this is i could obviously it's ranking a little higher on your list and i totally would concur with that because this is a really really strong album yeah i agree all right number four i'm gonna go with life from 1968 life. Yeah. and like you said they start out they keep getting better by yeah. 68 they're really coming into their groove this is the this is what i'm gonna say this is the last of the sunshine pop soul albums um we're starting to get a little bit, we've got, hey, th this is what's pretty cool on this record is it opens up with Dynamite and you've got fuzz guitar. There's a lot of guitar on this record. I'd say this is probably more guitar th than any other Sly and the Family Stone record. Um, but we're starting with the social commentary. You've got the Plastic People song. I don't know if Zappa and Sly were hanging out, but you know. We're starting to get on that social commentary thing. We're getting there. But this is more song oriented than the previous efforts. It's coming. There's not a, a great hit on here or anything. No, really not. Yeah. yeah. It's really one of those albums from the catalog that kind of gets overlooked, I think. Because there's no hits on it. Yeah. There's no hits. Yeah. But as a, a sunshine pop funk effort, the funk is good on here, even though Sly is going to refine it and even build up more funk than this but this is the last nice easy feeling punk pop funk record he did yeah. so i don't know it's good yeah give it I number four it. it's my number four yeah and i think you get a, it's starting to hear a little bit of the psychedelic stuff coming here right yeah. you got jane is a groupie right that's that's a total psychedelic so I, that's excellent yeah. um you know 
The only sort of hit on this album, but it wasn't a massive hit. It's one of my favorite songs, actually. Milady, I think, is terrific. Mm-hmm. Uh, that should have been an amazing uh, and chart topper hit. As it as it is, that became like a staple in their live set. But I, I think Milady is just terrific. You mentioned Dynamite is good, Chicken is great, Plastic Gym. I mean, so much fun stuff on here. The song Fun is lots of fun. I know it's kind of cliche to say that. Title track is really good. Um, this album, is, yeah, probably didn't do as well as the album before or the album after because there was no breakaway hit. But a couple of the tracks like the title track and Milady became staples of their live set. So they became popular songs, just not chart busting songs, but yeah, it's a, it's a feel good album. It's got terrific instrumentation. I totally agree with lots of good guitar on here. Uh, I'm an animal. He's Freddie's all over that one. You're starting to hear the fuzz bass from Larry as well. So yeah, good stuff. One of their best albums right here, but just not the immediate, Oh my God, every song is just dynamite, but every song really is very, very good on here. Yep. Yep. All right. My number three, I'm going to go with Fresh from 1973. This I consider a funk masterpiece. This, it's not dark like Riot. It's more upbeat, but it kind of, it continues from where Riot left off. So In Time has that same feel like anything that's on Riot. But this record is not dark. It starts off a little dark. But it's more positive. It more harkens back to that feeling good slime of family stone, you know. But it is funk at its finest, a funk masterpiece. Now, the funny thing is, we've got slap bass on here. We've lost Larry Graham. He and Sly had a falling out. Larry went on to Graham Central Station. We lost Larry. And you would think it this record would really suffer. But they've got rusty allen rusty's great (laughs) rusty is great yeah and no one i don't think anybody really mentions that how great of a player he is he takes what larry did or laid the foundation he just runs right with it and this record just totally has groove and if you want if you want me to stay as classic it's funky it's a great song and i like k Sarah, Sarah. i think it's fun it just kind of rem- it just reminds me of that era where they were happy and you know more positive but uh i i think it's great i there's not a weak track on it and if you'd look at re- review some people think this is where the the crack started to form i don't know if they want slide you know to be in like in a drug haze making records in his studio laying on his back in pitch black i don't know but i like this cuz it is a return to form this is the last my opinion, I think this is their last masterpiece. It's, you know, it's not Sly trying to be Sly, you know. It's like, a, you know, I don't look at this as a parody. Some of that other stuff, I can see kind of like they're a parody of themselves. Yeah. This, though, is pure Sly and Family Stone. Highly recommend it. It's, it record. comes across as a full band effort to me. I mean, that's, that's right. I think the, these albums that are at the top of our list, they're true band albums and you can feel everybody's mm-hmm. contribution to them. It's not just the, 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 the sly project. Right. So yeah, it's yeah. totally, Even this is a sly project, but it doesn't come off that way. It doesn't come off that way at all. Yeah. 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 The songs are all great. That's what it comes down to. Right. The song. Yeah. And now we mentioned his drug use. Now, if you listen to fresh, it, it doesn't sound druggy. It doesn't sound anything like what had come before, which we're going to get to. Yeah. You know, it just sounds like a return to form, so to speak. You know, it's not experimental, just good funk pop tunes. Yeah, that's all you need. That's all you need. All right, my number three, this is uh, this is a beast of an album, but pretty much unlike anything he has in his catalog. And uh, a lot of people, this is their favorite Sly and the Family Stone record. Uh, there's a riot going on from 1971, fifth album. So this is in the middle of his drug years, oh. obviously. Um, this is very different. And, you know, all you need to do is look at the back here to see like, all well, kind of what's going on. I mean, this is dark, serious, dense, drenched in political unease and counterculture and, and then dealing with fame and civil rights movement and everything that was kind of going on in the late sixties into the early seventies is channeled in here. Um, and again, he's 
At this time, cocaine was a hell of a drug for Mr. Sly Stone and maybe other members of the band. I don't know. Uh, but the songs are kind of less vibrant. Uh, they're not as upbeat and fun, but they're really good. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's not that kind of album from them, but it works. Uh, Love and Hate is total upbeat funk, right? It's one of the few times on this album, I think, where you get that kind of upbeat thing uh poet is like lean and mean and pulses and grooves you know africa talks to you the concrete jungle it's mm -hmm. like this nine minute jam right i mean this that could have been on like a, a miles davis album from the same time period and you know maybe how cool would it have been if miles and and slide did an album together i think that would have been amazing but jimmy see that guitar that would have been amazing right that they were, it's mm -hmm. like they were made for each other right uh brave and strong is just deep and funky and churning and just uh you know you Caught Me Smiling, probably one of the more lighthearted songs on here that almost kind of yeah. doesn't sound like it fits on this album, but it's just great. Uh, you know, thank you for taking me to Africa. I mean, just excellent stuff. Um, even though it's a, a reworking of the single, thank you, but it's still really, really cool. And I like yeah. the way they stretch things out because these guys could jam and they do on these early albums do some like longer jams. Um, like I said, this is not the big fun get up and dance mm -hmm. album from them but it doesn't need to be and it never stops grooving. So even though it's kind of dark and serious and tackling a lot of weird lyrical issues, this album never stops with the funk and it never stops grooving. So I think a lot of people are really drawn to this album because it is so different in this catalog. So um, I'm curious to see where you have it because it's a great <laughs> one. It's a great one. Yeah, well, this was, you know, my top two was very hard for me to pick the top two. Yeah, because yeah. both of them are brilliant. For different reasons. But for different reasons. And it could fluctuate. So I really, when we, it's, okay, this could change, but I'm going to go with, God, I may make enemies. I'm going to go with Stan from 1969 as my uh, number two. This is, and this is going to sound weird, but this would probably be the pinnacle of Sly and the Family Stone. You got, this is where funk, pop, melodies, rhythms, the band playing together. It's a perfect Slyness Family Stone album. You know, it, uh, think about this. Just th there's five songs on this record that were on the Greatest Hits album alone. Yeah. And that came out like a year later, you know? <laughs> and the only reason they put that Greatest Hits album out is because they were waiting for Sly to come up with you know, riot. So that's why that exists. But uh, it just seems funny that so soon after this album came out, five of those songs are on the greatest hits. Yeah. Um, we've got the song Sex Machine that predates James Brown. Yeah. Uh, Everyday People is a wonderful track. I want to take you higher. Absolutely brilliant. It all sounds like the family stone and the communal lead vocals are incredible. The interplay between the band. This is just the perfect record, even though it's not my number one, but it could be. Could if be. You ask me later. <laughs> Might be next week. If I talk to you, right? <laughs> it could be. And that's happens on these ranking shows. Like hell fresh could be my number one. I doubt it, but <laughs> these two just, you know, go back and forth. So yeah, it's, I it's a five star album. It's a 10 star out of 10 album. Yeah. Start here if you're going to get into Sly. More about that in a minute. But first, uh, my number two is Dance to the Music from 68, the second album. Whoa. I, yeah, I like this album a lot. I like this album a lot. But, you know, again, uh, I, I say it often here on the channel. Sometimes uh, a few album, a few albums, a few songs on an album are just so damn good mm -hmm. that they elevate the album itself up very high in a ranking like this, even though there are other albums that probably are stronger start to finish. Right. So, you know, this is the first album with Rose Stone, full time member of the band, adds so much vocally. Dance to the music is so good. Uh, Dance to the medley is so good. And I like I like these long jams from these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Color Me True is good. Are You Ready is so good. And Higher is really cool in this like early version. It's just interesting when you listen to Higher, it's still a really great song, even though I want to take you higher, takes it to another level. Um, I love Another reason why I really like this album a lot, Larry Graham is using that fuzz bass all over the place on this album. It just sounds so wicked cool. Um, I think this, to me, this is a huge improvement over the debut because the songs are so memorable. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it's all about. The horns are great on here. The organ's great. A lot of organ on this album. To me, this is where they're finally starting to embrace who they really want to be as a band, even though the next two or three albums would just take it to another level. I I just have a soft spot for this album. So that's my number two. That's good. You mentioned Rose Stone. And I think once they added Rose to the lineup, I think that was the missing piece. It was, yeah. Because no one really talks about it, but she added so much to the Mm -hmm. band, you know? And those vocals, those little call and answer vocals, right? Like he would sing and then she would come in and say something and then Freddie would come in and it's like, and they all sounded so different from each other. It just, it would just totally made sense. And like, God, where is, where has this been? Uh, you know, because on, on the first album, you didn't really get much of that. All of a sudden it no. just clicked with them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is when they really start coming together. Yeah. You know, and like they keep honing it in. Well, well we wow. know one might be a contrarian view, Pete. Dance the music, your number two. Yeah, wow. could be, could be. All right, kids. Well, my number one today is there's a riot going on from 1971. We deal with drug addiction, cynicism, social commentary out the yin yang on here. It is a dark, moody, I don't want to say depressing, but there's not many, there's not situations here where you're sitting here feeling good about everything because it's. No. It's quite different than anything else. Sly basically recorded everything in his studio. Hell, he might have been sitting in bed recording vocals. I'm not sure. (laughs) But he was doing a lot of coke, a lot of PCP. He was a mess. But it did not take anything away from the songwriting. The songs are here. But you all, this is the start of the next period. So you've got all that sunshine pop soul before. You know, it starts taking over on Stan, you know, but here, it, it, we're entering a new period, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing like this before. This is the first album, too, that was solely used drum machines. Yeah, that's right. I mean, though, they later laid some drums down, but Sly recorded everything. He's playing the bass, he's playing guitar, he's doing everything on this record. Basically, the band came in to do the background vocals when they were done. Is this a Sly and a Family Stone album, or is this a Sly Stone solo album? I don't know, but it sounds like Sly and a Family Stone. Yeah, it does. You still have Larry Graham. You've got Rose. You've got all the key players here, adding to the magic. You know, it's dark. It's creative. Let me say, if I was gonna, there's an analogy. Let's say this. If let's say you say that stands the best record i would say that would be uh comparable to the prince album uh sign of times most people think that sign of times is his the greatest record yeah Yeah. this is like prince's black album which is very kind of just like this kind of negative very heavy and funk and rap and that's the way i look at it their careers are very similar um it's dark funk, but it's it's not a funk classic like I think uh, Fresh is, but the funk is heavy on this record. Yeah. And one thing, even though no one gives him much credit, but I think all these parts, I think Sly's playing all the bass parts. I don't know how much Larry Graham added to this other than vocals, but man, even Sly's a hell of a bass player. And there's something about his bass lines that are really engaging too. You know, that's one thing about Sly and a Family Stone. All excellent musicians, like you said, great grooves, great playing everywhere on all of them, you know? God, the only track on this album that even has a hint of happiness is Running Away. It doesn't feel like it should even be on this record to me. It's just like, oh, look, oh, things are upturning, a little happiness here. Not for long. I do think it's a brilliant, I think it's brilliant. It's kind of like Beach Boy Smile, which, you know, got shelled, but later came out. It's brilliant in that way, as far as the amount. I'm Just think about it, 1971, and you're recording with drum machines? Yeah, He's right. He's thing yeah. in his house. He's doing, it's like McCartney One, where Paul did everything, you know? And not many people were doing that, other than maybe Emmett Rhodes and, God, I don't know. This is like the blueprint that Prince took. Think about it. All those early Prince albums, drum mm-hmm. machine, Prince playing everything. Yep, yep. He's like continues on where Sly left off to some degree. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. You know? 
I don't know. There's a sh- Pete. That's a show in itself. The comparison be Sly and the Family Stone and Prince. And Prince. So there's, there's a lot a of lot, stuff. yeah. There's, there's a lot there. I'll tell you. That's because some of the stuff I, I I hear Prince all over it. You know, I'm like, he no doubt was listening to this guy. Great. You look. You look at the reviews. The general reviews. Both this and Stan get five stars. Yeah. Both very different records. Totally different records. Yeah. It's brilliant. It is brilliant. I think a lot of people really like and admire the chances he took with the riot album because it's it's so different in his catalog and it's just uh but it's perfect for the time right i mean you could you could be into this album listen to this and then go put on black sabbath paranoid right because it's again they're 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 both kind of shrouded in this darkness and this almost like negativity but that was pretty common at the time because it wasn't a beautiful world in 1971 and you know why not take your influence in creating a piece of work like this from all this negativity and this ugliness that's surrounding us in the world. Right. Cause I think the seventies were over, right. Grant, I mean, the, the hippie dippy flower yeah. child days are, they're done. Well, yeah. they said that the, when Rolling Stones played Altamont, that's when the sixties ended pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty I much. agree. Everything like changed overnight. Yeah. That was it. No way yeah. This is, yeah, this is seventies. And the other thing I want to say, we mentioned how it's dark and murky Sly would re-record and overdub and re-record and overdub so much on the tape that it's losing oxide and it starts to really sound like it, it's not a good sounding record, you know. If anything, it needs remixed. And I don't know if you could remix it, but it just has that sound. The production matches the social commentary, just the druggy feel. I mean, it, it as a record, it works. Yeah, yeah, it does. I think leave it, leave it as is, because it's, right. it's perfect as it as it is. Well, it's like that. I'm jumping. The, I'm going on a tangent, but think about Pink Floyd Animals when they did that remix. How it opened that whole thing up because it was murky. It's murky like this. Yeah, and, and that must have been in the mastering. This Pink Floyd, that new Animals is like a breath of fresh air to me. Yeah, so Sonically, good. that record sounds great. And I don't know, maybe Riot, maybe there's a better sounding record here. But you're again, if you mess with it, it might take something away from it. Yeah, it might lose some of that charm that it has, even though it's a weird sort of charm, right? But that's right. maybe that's just the way this is supposed to sound, right? I don't know. I don't know. Again, it all comes down to the songs, right? Uh, right. The songs are there, and that's what it's all about. Like for me, my number one is Stand, no surprise. Because to me, this has got the best songs. This is mm-hmm. kind of like this is uh, when you like like you said, if you want to turn someone on to Sly and the Family Stone, this is the record they should listen to first for mm-hmm. me. Uh, you know, he's writing all the songs. He's producing it. He arranges this. Uh, this comes out right before Woodstock. So, of course, they go to Woodstock and they play some of the stuff live. It goes over great. I mean, it's just got great. I mean, ah, title track is great. Highly memorable. Don't call me. You know what? Right. Is a funk classic uh it rocks hard it's got some i mean freddie is so good on this album he's got wah wah guitar licks all over the place and he's just got this biting tone uh i absolutely love i want to take you higher mm-hmm. i have had that stuck in my head all week grant i can't get it out <laughs> and just like it's just man that mm-hmm. opening guitar lick and the and the bass and just the vocals it's just so good um and we we haven't really talked about it much but Greg Errico is on fire on this album. What yeah. a drummer, this guy. What a drummer. Great fuzz bass all over the place. Uh, Sing a Simple Song is so good. I mean, we can talk everyday people is an instant classic. I mean, the first time you hear that, you can't stop singing that song. Uh, the Big Jam is Sex Machine is so good. Again, I mentioned um, Miles Davis before. Miles went into this whole kind of like funky fusion period shortly, right, right after this. Um, which started with kind of Bitches Brew and then uh, Jack Johnson and all these other albums around the corner. And it's basically, he's getting it from here. That's where he's getting it from. I mean, Miles has gone on record saying that he loved Sly and the Family Stone. And a lot of his directions in music at the start of the 70s came from this album. Uh, I think this is a wonderful album. It grooves, it rocks, it's funky as all hell. The horns are great. The vocals are terrific. Everything's great about it. And uh, I think the cover is fantastic too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's a perfect record. Yeah, you know, but you know, I rate 
Right, just because of the experimentation and the fact that Sly is just pushing the boundaries. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even though he might be in a drug haze, the songs are there. You know, it. I don't know. There's That was my number one for today. But Stan could be there tomorrow. Ooh. It's a perfect record, you know? Yeah, I agree. Because, like good. you said, it had five singles that were on the greatest hits. And this is just jam-packed full of singles. The songwriting's top-notch perfect record yeah and what's really interesting about this catalog uh, and and this band in general is that uh you mentioned singles so they had a couple really notable singles around this time period that weren't on any album which mean which makes owning the original greatest hits very worthwhile to get because you've got three songs on here that aren't on any of these albums we talked about and you know you you have to have them you got to have thank you right for letting myself i mean you have to have that another classic yeah just think about that they're waiting for riot to come out and sly they produce thank you for letting you be myself again it's yeah. amazing yep yep there, here here you go put that on the greatest hits that's right hot fun in the summertime's on here as well you know you, you got to have these songs yeah uh you can make it if you try i mean these are on here so it's totally worthwhile having this as well and i will mention if uh we have intrigued you enough with all these studio albums here uh, there's the Woodstock one I mentioned before, which is a great performance. But if you want to hear Sly and the Family Stone on stage at their jamming best, you got to have Live at the Fillmore, oh. which is a uh, multi-disc set with all sorts of great performances from the Fillmore East in New York City, October 4th and 5th. Uh, this is back in the day where you know bands would come into town and they would play multiple nights and sometimes multiple performances each day that's what they did in the 60s this is great and you get extended versions of all sorts of cool stuff i'll just kind of i, I talked about this on the curse of the collector once before but a fantastic fantastic set if you love this type of music live on stage with lots of jam and, and just ridiculous grooves with all the members of this band totally firing on all cylinders and again this is 1968 so this is even before the stand album came out so you, if you like the early stuff in the first three albums all on here so you got like great versions of life and milady and dance to the music's on here and all sorts of other cool stuff medleys can't recommend that highly enough so the other thing i want to mention is that yes they can dive into slime the family stone for not too much money because the That's original album yeah. series okay they had that reissue campaign in the early 2000s everything that's on here the the, the first five out it, they all have the bonus tracks this is a, you can get this for 15 bucks if you yeah, like it's cheap dirt cheap and i don't think that the rest of the albums like this is part of the original reissue campaign but you don't get all the liner notes and stuff in here but you do get the album artwork like it came yeah. out back in the day but highly recommend it just spend the money if you need you know i'm a physical media guy i don't stream i can't stream it's like a sin but if you want physical media everybody check this out highly recommended it's still in print and like uh pete was showing this is still in print too if you want to look at any of these records this is i think this might be i mean his solo album high on you i'm not sure if that came out separately it came out in japan i don't know if it ever yeah. really came out domestic i don't think you can get it in any other format other than on this yeah. one yeah so Ooh, all that oh. stuff's available just letting you know but definitely go check out slime the family stone if you haven't oh yeah. my god great yeah. catalog good stuff yeah and and what you'll find if you're new to the band is that uh you'll hear things and think of other bands that you probably enjoyed that came out way later and now you know where it all came from from right here. it all came from here it's either coming from james brown sly stone well at least in this year i think you know most people think that James Brown invented funk. He may have, I think, or I think he and Sly were like nose, nose and nose, you know, I think. I think Sly really put it on the map to like a mass scale. Right. Yeah. Cause James Brown never really, people knew who James Brown was, but I don't think he ever really sold a lot of records. Not like yeah, he wasn't Sly selling did. millions of copies of records. No, no. Right. He was an innovator. Don't get me wrong, but Sly was able to take it 
that commercial aspect and put it out there to the masses. And obviously has influenced so many people. Look at Prince. Prince is basically a, I don't want to say a ripoff. Prince is his own person, but look how much he pulls from Sly and the Family Stone. Well, and James Brown, for God's sakes. Hell, and Little Richard, for goodness sakes. Yeah, true. But I'm just saying, Prince is like a, a combination of a lot of different things. You yeah, know? and it came out at the right time, right? When all these other guys you mentioned kind of already had their day. So let's bring it into the 80s and, and take it from there. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He could do what Sly couldn't do. Yeah, yeah. But everybody has, everyone has their moment, you know? You can't be the Rolling Stones, not every band's a Rolling Stones with longevity and the fan base and the way they continue. All these bands usually have a lifespan. Yeah. Rolling Stones, I don't know what the deal is. It must be business, I guess. I don't know. But they'll do it. New album coming out, new videos out. And it's, yeah, it's, give them credit. These guys are God, my parents' age, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I still think that Keith Richards is going to outlive all of us. He he will he will be 110 years old and the rest of us will be in the ground. So, yeah, he seems to be able to handle any kind of drug he was thrown at and he seems yeah. to endure. Maybe that's preserving him. I don't know. I guess. I don't know. He's, he's, he's been pleasantly pickled, I guess. <laughs> All right. So uh, for those of you watching, if you are a fan already of Sly and the Family Stone, please rank the albums uh, as you like them down in the comments below. And if you hopefully today, if you're, if you've never really investigated this band all that much, you've got some directions to go. Uh, I would highly agree with what Grant said. If, if the uh, best first place to go is just to go buy this, this, this should be a no brainer. It's so affordable. And that really gives you, you know, five of their key key albums right off the bat. And then you'll have to go get fresh, obviously, but uh, not too bad. That's easily to get easy to get out there too. So uh, Grant, before we let you go, why don't yes. you some plugs to uh, your channel as well as Con contrarians what's going on uh, both. Of oh. Them? oh, there's a lot going on on both on the contrarians. We are now doing well, Pete was a guest on one of our live shows on Wednesday at uh, 7 p.m. every Wednesday. So Martin, Jamie Laszlo, and Peter Kerr, though sometimes we may switch it up with people. We are going to tackle band logos, the good, bad, and the ugly. So that's a topic for Wednesday. If you're into it, come by. We want to see in the chat. We want to interact. Martin is like a machine reading those uh comment so uh it's like a it's amazing so but we have a lot of fun doing it and we do want to hear from you that is great on grant's rock warehouse i just did a show with a panel where we were ranking our albums from 1975 so we each do our top 10 that's recorded i just have to put it together uh, i just did a show with um paul simon where we looked at the band shaw blades and in particular we looked at the influence album no one's talking that record. That no. record came out and went into the oblivion. And two very talented guys. And on my channel, I try to talk about this stuff that's no one's talking about. Who's talking Shaw Blades for crying out loud? But anyway, we're looking at Shaw Blades, underrated. I mean, it's too bad they didn't produce more. Uh, also got Super Tramp um, episode coming up where we're looking through at crimes through breakfast and the helix series we're doing part three in our helix series with uh, tim derling and uh, michael ladano so we're looking at that period in helix in the 2000s so first episode martin was on and then we did another one with mike and we're just cooking on helix right now Ooh, right well helix love <laughs> it's good to talk about the uh, more obscure bands every so often, right? I mean, you know, well, you know, he looks at that every most people know, but they're like, you know, maybe they had an album or two or whatever. And it's, yeah, but I, I like to cover those bands that no one's talking. Everybody talks Pink Floyd, everybody talks Judas Priest all the time. It's kind of nice to mix it up, and hopefully, we can turn people on to stuff that they haven't heard. That's the whole goal with my channel. There you yeah. go. Very cool. But so but speaking yeah. about turning people on to music they might not have heard. So on this very show, a week from today, Craig Kaminsky will be jumping into the co-captain's chair and he and I will be ranking the catalog of the kind of obscure but very cool doom band called The Obsessed. So, of course, that's uh, Scott Wino's band. So that's coming up. So we're switching from funk to doom in the span of seven days hey that's how we roll here on sot so uh stay tuned for that and more of course uh tomorrow is uh hudson valley squares night monday night we'll be doing our q a show so tune in tomorrow as we answer the questions you guys have asked from the last week or so 
and uh, that'll be loads of fun. We've also got Monsters Den coming up this week as well, where we'll be uh, doing a little tribute to William Freakin, who passed away recently. We're going to do a little discussion of his movies, but more importantly, talking about The Exorcist, as we got the new Exorcist 4K uh, disc coming out real soon. So we'll be doing a little William Freakin Exorcist kind of show, and uh, that will be followed up by a Q&A uh, episode on the Monsters Den two weeks from this Thursday. So, yeah, so lots happening. So please go investigate uh, the Contrarians in the Rock Warehouse and uh, give some love over to Grant and his crews over there. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. I'll leave uh, links to Grant's other two channels down below so please go check them out and uh we'll see you real soon for grant arthur imp pardo enjoy your weekend go get the funk out everybody talk soon bye-bye see you